Hey, how's it going everyone? This is K Collections and today's video will be on a servant spotlight on Dear Moot, Knight of Fianna, one of my personal favorite servants. You may recognize him from Fate Zero, a very awesome character. Sadly, like many, many other Lancers in the Fate series, he met a tragic, tragic end. So, let's get started. We're going to start off by looking at his character illustration. It doesn't look bad whatsoever. It's not really my style, however. His final ascension artwork looks very peaceful. It looks good for the most part. However, for me, I kind of prefer something like Ku's final ascension artwork where he's getting ready to do battle or something. But let me know what you guys think. Do you guys like the artwork or do you hate it? Comment down below. Let me know. Now what we're going to do is do a stats comparison amongst the three star Lancer class. So I arranged this from highest attack towards the lowest attack. As you guys can already tell, their mood actually has the lowest attack amongst the three star Lancer class. His base attack is 1277. Now if you max him out, he would then have 6877. Now if you also grail him, max grail him, he will have 9307. So his HP is a little bit more better when compared to the Lancers. Uh, his HP is actually the second highest, just under Hector's, and it's the same as Proto Ku's. His base HP is 1,817, and if you max him out, it will be 10,098. Max Grailham will be 13,691. Next, we're going to compare his Star Absorption, Generation, and his Noble Phantasm Charge. He actually has the same Star Absorption as regular Ku at 87, but the thing to know about Dermood is he has the highest Star Generation at 12.3%, highest amongst all three Star Lancers. For his Noble Phantasm Charge, now that's a little bit more lackluster. It's only at 0.79%, which is under 1%. All the other 3-star Lancer has above 1% charge attack. Uh, so that's, you know, it's kind of depressing there. For his uh, Noble Phantasm Charge, whenever he gets hit, it's standard 4%. His growth curve is a reverse S, meaning he gained most of his stats boost in the beginning and towards the end when you're leveling him up, not so much in the middle. For his attack cards, he has two quick, two arts, and one buster. All of them does two hits, except for his extra attack, which does four hits. Looking at his skills, his first skill is Eye of the Mind True B. And we've seen this a lot of times. Emiya has this skill. It grants the user one turn invasion, which is always great because you know you can survive a lot longer. You can survive a noble phantasm attack. It also increases the servant's defense for three turns, anywhere from nine percent upwards to eighteen percent, depending on the level, which is really excellent. Uh, the only thing is when you compare this uh, evasion skill with Ku and Proto Ku, it's uh, less efficient because uh, the other Ku's or the other Lancers, Ku and Proto Ku has evasion for three hits. This one is just for one turn. His second skill is a little bit more specialized for Dermood, which is Love Spot C. It reduces the attack of all female enemies for one turn. My biggest, biggest complaint would be that this is only for one turn because now it becomes more situational now you really have to determine when to use this the thing is let's say uh, you want to use it to decrease a noble phantasm attack I wouldn't really say that's the most efficient way unless you absolutely have to because let's say you're trying to survive an NP attack you would probably use uh, you know, evasion skills uh, maybe more defense buffs something like that but it's still useful it's very situational keep that in mind My for me, I kind of wish it was maybe for three turns. If it were for three turns, it's definitely more useful. If not, you know, at least put like attack up or something or, you know, defense boost. But Love Spot C by itself right now, as is, it's a little underwhelming. Moving on to his last skill, it's Nightly Tactics B, which we, again, we've seen this a thousand times. It increases the user's star generation for three turns. It matches Deer Mood very well, especially when he has a very high star generation rate. And just to let you guys know, you know these skills don't really synergize with each other too much. Uh, it's a lot more independent. 
when compared to a few other servants who have skills that really synergize with each other. I, if you're talking about synergy, I guess you could say you, know, you could use Love Spot C after you use the evasion because you'll have you know, the increased defense and then now you know, you're reducing attack of the enemies for one turn. But other than that, you kind of use them separately and it's, a, it's very situational. For his passive skill, he has only one, which is Magic Resistance B. It increases his own resistance to debuffs by 17.5%. Taking a look at his Noble Phantasm now, this is honestly one of the biggest highlight for the Servant. It's a quick type with two hits. It deals damage to one enemy and removes their buffs, which is very essential, especially in the late game, because you guys probably experienced it already where one Servant would just give themselves so many attack so many defense up or even crit up or something and it's just sometimes annoying so their move removes all that very very helpful on top of that since his noble phantasm is a quick type you could brave chain it with his other two quick card attacks so that's just add more star generation overall and on top of that this is just a cherry on top it curses one enemy for five turns it it does 500 damage upwards to 1,500 every turn depending on the overcharge effect. Moving on to his ascension and skills, these are the materials required. It's honestly, I don't want to say it's simple or easy, but it's not demanding. He doesn't require any hearts, he doesn't require any reverse dragon skills or anything like that. I'd say the most uh, challenging material to farm would probably be the snake jewel or even the feather. But aside from that, you know, I already said it, it's not as demanding, you know, trying to farm for those hearts or you know, those scales. Same thing could be said about his skills. The most challenging one, I would say, would probably be the feathers. The seeds are relatively easy to get. I do believe they have like a 30 to 40% drop rate on Okeanos or one of the daily challenges. So, ending off with the recommended craft essence, I really encourage you guys to equip Imaginary around with their mood. Uh, simply put, you now he's a quick card player. Increasing quick cards by 25% is very efficient. If you max limit break imaginary around, it will be 30%. If you don't have imaginary around, or you prefer to equip that craft essence to a different servant, his own bond craft essence is quite good as well. Uh, when equipped to Deer Moot, it increases the party's quick card and arts card performance by 10% while he's on the field. So very very efficient right there I also encourage you to equip any basically a craft essence that improves his quick card or uh, star generation for Deer Mood as far as team goes I definitely encourage you to put him with a team that specializes in star generation and crit damage uh, and you know have a sufficient amount of quick cards right I wouldn't really say too much of a buster team because he does only have one buster card uh, again quick cards he has two regular quick cards attack and one noble phantasm which is a quick card as well so any team that revolves around star generation and crit damage has a significant amount of quick cards he'll feel right at home so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button let me know what you guys think uh, if i miss anything feel free to comment down below also let me know if you guys are pulling for the skyhawk banner I'm really excited to pull for her, as well as getting Dear Mood, because he's, again, I said in the beginning, he's one of my most favorite servants in the Fate series. And subscribe to my channel, because I'll be doing a lot more Fate Grand Order videos. I do plan on doing uh, more Servant Spotlights. The next one would probably be the new 3-star Saber, Fergus. And so just keep an eye out for that video. I may do Skaha, I may not. It depends on my time schedule. And before I end this video, I just want to give a huge, huge thanks to all my subscribers, all the people who you know, comment down on videos, who like my videos. You guys are so awesome. You make this community so great. So I can't thank you guys enough. And just remember to have fun with this event. It's going to be a huge, huge blast. And till next time, guys, have an awesome day.